Chair Manchin, thank you. Over the past year, in fact, 11 months, I've traveled to Europe several times. I've visited 10 countries across the continent, Ukraine, Romania, Germany, Lithuania, Estonia, Poland, Latvia, Moldova, Slovakia, and Hungary. One lesson stood out in every single country I visited. Energy security is national security. I met with high-level leaders in government and industry. They all told me about the importance of reducing dependence on Russian energy and the critical role the United States can play. In Lithuania, I had a chance to visit their new LNG import terminal. By the way, that big ship that has the regasification process on top of it is called the Independence for good reason. Because with this terminal, they now can turn away from Russia and begin importing LNG from the United States and other friendly nations. It's a big step for energy security of Eastern Europe. We should be applauding and promoting more projects like it. What I fear, though, is we have an administration that might say one thing occasionally in public, but they're not learning from the lessons of Europe. Europe's green delusion resulted in a near complete dependence on Russia for energy. Many countries shut down their baseload coal and nuclear plants without having a real plan. One leader in Europe, describing some of his colleagues to the north, said a vision without an action plan is a hallucination. In fact, Europe went so far as to condition Lithuania to get into the EU to decommission their nuclear plant. Lithuania used to be a net energy exporter, but because it was the green whim of the moment, when, when anti-nuclear for a period of time, they had to shut down their plant to get in the EU, leaving them very vulnerable, and thank God for LNG that's helping make up now for that loss of baseload power. It's truly baffling. We can't let this administration take us down the same dangerous path. I don't think this administration is learning anything from it. This religion, this pursuit of this green hallucination is a dangerous moment in U.S. history and for the world. They're talking out of two sides of their mouth. On one hand, DOE is approving more LNG terminals to supply our allies. On the other hand, FERC is slow walking pipeline approvals that would support these export terminals. You've got to have infrastructure to get the gas to the ports. We take a step forward by banning Russian oil imports, but then the Department of Interior cancels lease sales, increases fees and taxes on small producers, stalls a plan for offshore oil, enacts regulation after regulation to close on domestic production, and of course, he shuts down the Keystone Pipeline in Montana, which was, besides being a million barrels a day of oil, is $80 million of tax revenues every year to impoverished counties across Montana. You have the President of the United States in a State of the Union speech. He ad-libs. And he says, we only need oil for the next 10 years. It was a laughable moment. But even his own Energy Information Administration, the EIS says, quote, petroleum and natural gas remain the most consumed source of energy in the United States through 2050. That's coming right out of a subset of the DOE. Dr. Light, what's the deal? Does this administration have a real plan to stop Putin's stranglehold on Europe, cut off his war chest that's funded by energy exports, or is this administration talking out of both sides of its mouth? Thank you very much for the qu uh, question, uh, Senator Danes. And uh, I have to say personally, thank you very much for the travel that you've done in the region and the expressions of Amer support of the American people to these countries who are on the front lines of everything. So we really do appreciate that. Um, uh, I do believe we have a plan. I think that we've seen it in, in action. We have seen a, an absolute surge in LNG exports to Europe, uh, far more than we did in 2021. 2022, this didn't happen by accident. It wasn't just, you know, purchasers in Europe deciding that they were going to turn to LNG out of desperation. There was a lot of concentrated efforts by this administration, including at a very critical moment when price, when there was a price crunch and a supply crunch last year, persuading the Japanese and the Koreans to defray some of their LNG uh, uh, tanks, tanker shipments that they were getting there, and instead to surge them to Europe where they were more needed. Yeah. So there is an effort here for cooperation that we're... Right, but, but I say, and, and I appreciate that, working. may interrupt, is that um, we just put the hundredth judge on the bench here of the Biden administration. So while you talked about something, it's, this, it's, it's necessary as an important step, it's not sufficient. When these far left ideological judges are being put on the bench here that interject themselves, stopping projects in the natural resource side of the equation, their lifetime appointments, and until we fix this problem, which is a long-term problem, permitting reform is a very good thing, but we still run a very real risk right now through activist ju uh, judicial leaders here who are driving an ideological agenda here who are anti-conventional sources of energy. I want to move on to gas stoves. Europe's begging us for American energy. 
Um, and now we've got the DOE throwing out all common sense, prohibiting 96% of existing gas stoves. Just when I thought it couldn't get more ridiculous, it did. My question is, the White House recently said it does not support banning gas stoves, but the proposed rule effectively bans 96% of existing gas stoves. What's the truth? Uh, the president does not support the banning of gas stoves. So I wonder what the rule is, though. I understand what the president it. says up in front because he knows Absolutely. politically he's got an absolute firestorm on his hands because people are looking back and saying this is ridiculous. So, so sir, I, I would be very happy to arrange for a meeting between the staff for the. Uh, the right. I, I just want to say the truth is the rule ban 96 percent of existing gas stoves. Right, and that's outside the purview of my office. I'm sorry, sir, but it, it's I'm international. You don't have an answer. We want to get an answer. E to that. E yeah. E R E. I'm sure would be very happy to have a meeting with your staff to talk about those questions and and get to a good answer thank you thank you